By now, it has become trite knowledge, but also the Uganda Bureau of Statistics has confirmed to us that agriculture is the backbone of Uganda's economy, a sector that employs almost 50% of the country's population, but also a sector that contributes to the largest um, source of income to so many households in Uganda. Well, whereas this is a fact, as of last week, media was awash with uh, videos or pictures of the situation in Karamoja, which is very dying. We saw people, you know, literally starving to death, but also the question around famine. But we know that um, food insecurity is actually a national insecurity. So today we are here to evaluate and explore this particular conversation. What interventions need to be done, but also what is the long lasting solution? Is it an aspect of climate change or is it an aspect of, you know, we simply need to look at our food basket from a different angle? Well, to explore this conversation, I'm joined by a panel of distinguished um, three gentlemen and a single lady. Well, the fourth gentleman will join us slightly later on. So I'll just introduce them to you right away and ask them to say good afternoon to you, our viewers. To the extreme left is Dr. Deus Kamunyo, who is a lecturer at Macquarie University. Dr. Many thanks for joining us. And uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, good afternoon, viewers, and uh, thanks for hosting me. All right. Many thanks for joining us this afternoon. Next to Dr. Deus is um, Council. Council, nope. Mrs. Not Mrs. Not missing anything. Agnes Kirabo. <laughs> okay, Agnes Kirabo, <laughs> who is the Executive Director of Food Rights Alliance Uganda. Many thank thanks for joining us. Oh, please, thank you so much for hosting me. Mm. Uh, greetings to you, our viewers. All right, thank you. You're all very brief. Yeah, <laughs> yeah next to uh, to Miss Agnes, sorry, next to Agnes rather, mm. and next to myself is Mr. Othieno Joseph who is a Uganda People's Congress ideologue and also a media personality. Many thanks for joining us, senior citizen. Good to be here and uh, thanks for hosting me. Uh, my name is Ocheno, in fact, Ocheno of Nagongera, not Ocheno. Okay. Uh, it's a pity we are discussing this after 36 years of, uh, of an NRA regime that seems to be wanting to continue thinking that there's got anything to offer. As a matter of interest, as an introduction, um, using my Sunday column only a few weeks ago, Mm. I wrote about Karamoja and um, the, the, the distasteful nature in which we have uh, Karamojon kids and, and, um, and mainly kids uh, in the streets of Kampala, you know, parking at uh, corners of uh, traffic lights and uh, people in big cars, sometimes single individuals, uh, bushmen being pursued and followed and protected by a fleet of over 20 people. Ugandans, it's a shame we're here today. Yeah, I think... Uh... I partly agree with you. Well, let's let's just begin with Agnes. Agnes, you've done research around food security and you know areas around food science. In your own view, to the viewer who has no idea about what is happening in Karamoja, how would you explain to them? How does Uganda, a country that prides in saying that agriculture is our backbone, find itself having certain parts of the country not having food? <laughs> I have not researched about food. Okay. I have worked on food okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. as a human right and uh, I'm proud that I'm counting over uh, 15 years of consistently working on this very subject. For every single year of my career, there were new developments. To start with, there's so many years ago when I would say I'm working on food and I'm actually concerned that there are people sleeping hungry amid the stars and that uh, food is a governance issue, I would appear mad. Uh, nobody would even wish to listen to me a second. And here we are. So I'm one of the happiest people because I have been consistently, painfully, been looking at these issues and actually raising them in the public domain. And uh, so many people thought it's a joke. Uh, therefore, what I need to tell viewers out there, that one, it is sad, but it's not only sad, mm. it is actually embarrassing. Our government is embarrassed to the marrow. We are so embarrassed. It is shameful. It is immoral that today, in the 21st century, 2022, we are having headlines 
accompanied by nasty pictures, dehumanizing pictures. And, and you see people treating it mm. as something normal. I also wish to tell the viewers that for years of the recent governess, we have been uh, staying and living with hungry people, extremely hungry people. Official statistics from this very government in 2017 revealed that we are having 10.9 million people in a food insecurity crisis. This figure has never been better. Every other single year, it is getting worse. So from 10.9 million people in a food insecurity crisis in 2017, then we saw another 20, 10 more million adding to the 10.9. Then we were in COVID in 2020 and it is estimated that 2 more million people. So we are getting to 30 million people in this country in a food insecurity crisis. And you see people running like they are running for an emergency. Hunger is not an emergency. We are not at war, we've been told. We are at peace. That's what has been preached. But we are rushing to Karamoja like hunger happened as an emergency. Mm -hmm. You cannot fire fight hunger. Mm -hmm. You can't. So I can tell you that I don't know which Ugandan is going to happen outside this country and is going to be proud to say, I'm a Ugandan coming from such a country where we cannot govern the basic. That's one. Yeah. Two, this rhetoric that agriculture is the backbone there is no single person. We all know the role of a backbone in our body. And we all know what happens if your backbone is damaged or injured. We know. Surely, who can treat his or her backbone? Then we treat agriculture in this country. Who does that? So for me, it also hurts me that we mock ourselves. And people proudly write about this. And when we get to the budgetary allocations... But, um, just, just, just to cut you short, yes. sorry. Isn't that an unfair allegation? Because whereas you are saying that the government of Uganda is not investing so much in agriculture, we have seen so many interventions like NADS, Operation Wealth Creation. I mean, how do you then explain all this? Aren't all these interventions that are supposed to strengthen the backbone? I was leading you there. Parish development. Parish development <laughs> model and all <laughs> Who told you that the parish is agriculture? <laughs> yeah. well, Those are the, two different things. The idea is a form. But let me tell you. Let me tell yeah. you this. Well, as I'm in agreement that we have tried here and there to design interventions, just to do a reflection on the most recently read budget mm. of 2020 to 2023, and the minister Ebly said, "I have given agriculture 546 billion shillings." But I also wish to tell people, that one came in by saying, you can't treat your backbone, then we treat our backbone. Okay, thank you, thank you, Agnes. I want to just bring in doctor just right there. Doctor, you're specialized on areas around hospitality and tourism. Food. Yeah, if it's if it's hospitality, mm -hmm. then yeah, yeah. food. <laughs> yes, <laughs> food is the start. Yeah, yeah. it was all your fault. <laughs> Tell us now. Yes, so, <laughs> doctor, the the question who then linger because Uganda, I must say, has attracted so much foreign um, direct investment. Yes, FDIs from its agricultural diversity. Where does this leave us as a country? Given that um, pocket cases within the country are experiencing such conditions. Do you think it is, it is, it is, it is sustainable? Do you think agriculture is, is something that we should continue to look at as, as a backbone of, of our economy, or we are slowly beginning to deviate from that? 
maybe to first of all deal with the, the Karamoja um, hunger emergency. <laughs> <laughs> The, the problems of Karamoja are very historical. They, they, I think they were brewed by our colonial masters when they deliberately kept our brothers and sisters in some kind of uh, no-go zone and uh, incapacitated them in every way, exploited their resources in every way and kept them backward deliberately. Unfortunately, the, the first son of this country, my friend Joe is here, seemed to have uh, continued with the same policy <laughs> at independence. Shall not wait for Karamoja to do. Uh, very unfortunate uh, historical, but you needed even a permit to leave Karamoja to Uganda during the colonial. I, I, some people who are fighting for Independence, why imprisoned? Detained in Karamoja. In Karamoja yes. <laughs> so it was like a, a place, an abandoned area, and, and they accused them for being warriors and cooperatives mm. and uh, raiders. And, and then uh, the first son, uh, by all standards, is the first son of this country, our, our founding father, uh, continued with the same policy. So we are talking about a region battered by. Uh, historical injustices. Uh, injustices. Uh, recently, the, the NRM government uh, tries very hard to, to to work on integration strategies and, and interventions that would bring Karamoja on board. But recently, also we see it's being uh, the, the policy is transforming. The, the injustices are transforming now to the, they are being subjected to. Uh, a, a, a capitalist mode <laughs> of production mm. being left to oligarchs, corrupt people, and the corrupt authority. Because this this speech, which was made by Musei to His Excellency, reveals a lot that you have left us some people thieving. So, but it was just a change of policy. Now, now, so Karamoja is is, is suffering from uh, injustices. But let's look at food insecurity. Uh, uh, in, in general and the fact that they have been <sighs> we better look at the kind of mode of production that uh, Uganda is settling for I don't know whether we can clearly say it but, but by all standards I believe that uh, Uganda is a peripheral capitalist country it's, it's, and usually a, peri a peripheral, anything peripheral is weak in every way. Weak institutions, weak uh, education, weak uh, food systems, weak, okay. weak, 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 peripheral. And, and we are talking about poor people, uneducated people, enlightened people, unaware people uh, involved in free market uh, <laughs> politics <laughs> of production. And so hunger is, is one of the things that come up once in a while. Shows, hunger shows up, it's an ugly head. Because look, look at how we organized. A cooperative societies are no more. There were some kind of, a, uh, one could call them a little socialist in, in a way, but they could have been a, 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 a sort of like a, a, a savior at this time. Because in, 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 I, I lived around the time when cooperative societies were booming. My father was a treasurer of one. And the and, uh, uh, Boti government used to push communities to have a, a granary for, for some transaction mm -hmm. and a granary for food security. For, for, it was a, a granary for government, mm -hmm. uh, some government. And, and in some way, that kind of approach was helping us to, to contain possibility or to, uh, uh, to, 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 to sort of like uh, fight a situation where there's hunger. Mm. That, to an extent that, for example, if there was a bump harvest <clears throat> in Shema or in Greater Ankore, would now, you know, 
try to use that to, to help Karamocha. And so think more about the mode of production. Mm. Capitalism has its very ugly side. And we are in free markets. I see poor people also involved in free market economics. <laughs> and the, 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 the buyers come and you go to the market and you, poor people are trading with the middlemen. Mm. They, they get cheap. It is a willing buyer and a willing seller. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about very poor people. So, and also the the extensive. I'm talking about. Don't forget what I started with the injustices the other side. So mm. they, they are in some kind of land. but also hunger is a, is encroaching on this other side. This mm. other side. Uh, and and so, the there are lots of issues that have gone on mm. with the, the, the vagaries of, of capitalism. Uh, fragmentation of land, land. Uh, selling mm. of small plots for over speculation over land, land being looked at as a a, a, a commercial uh, a, a good also, which which is okay, and and the fact that we 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 departed from Obote's policy of land, to some extent owned by government now to individuals owning their pieces of land, so it becomes very hard for capitalist farmers mm. to emerge, serious capitalist farmers okay. to emerge. Uh, the, the ones that we are seeing are in, in areas of, uh, uh, of, 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 let's say, uh, 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 sugar cane, uh, in uh, like scale production there, and uh, in, in, in areas of tea, mm. uh, or palm. palm. But we are not, uh, we are not seeing serious farmers mm. in, in 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 food, food. crops okay. that could that could help mm. balance the equation in, in so so the, the mode of production if are only this the direct investment or whatever. and I, and i think uh, the government is aware that that's where we are going we are we are moving towards capitalist farmers mm. and so land is a big problem but yeah. we think a few land grabbers will ac accumulate the land and, and then production. maybe later seed it to a capitalist farmer. Then a capitalist farmer will produce the food we want. Mm. But how do we take care of this emergency? Okay. It is a matter of, Let me of just... vulgarization that we, we, must, uh, we must contain. Yeah, thank you. Fair enough. <laughs> Let me just uh, put your question into context and just throw it to Mr. Joseph. Uh, Mr. Joseph, doctor has brought the aspect of the historical injustices against Karamoja as a region. But this same region, Which about which is a continued with. <laughs> well, this same region, about over a month ago, was uh, was participating in cattle raids amongst themselves. So, I have to speak slightly to the aspect of the social, cultural practices, norms, and values of these particular people, because could it have contributed? To where they are finding themselves today, that they are focused so much <clears throat> on accumulative on, on accumulating primi primitively cattle and forgetting to do agriculture, <laughs> and therefore they could be orchestrators of their own, you know, this is animal husband crisis. Culture. I don't know. What do you think about that? You have they played a role? Thousand, have they played a role food. in finding themselves where they are today? You know, or uh, it is purely natural <clears throat> natural circumstances and conditions. As Deus has generously said, animal husbandry is agriculture yeah. and uh, there should really be no reason why that should impact directly into what is happening so yes if they have their cattle which are doing very well uh, there's no reason why their children should be enjoying milk and so therefore the the um, the the malnutrition that we see on televisions and newspapers shouldn't occur uh, but if, so if it were the case Mm. I, I'm witness in 1987 uh, that NRA almost certainly and almost with evidence participated in a ransacking of uh, Karamojo and Tezu cows to southern Uganda. And there is evidence and has been suggested that um, even today NRA is a party to some of the conflicts in Karamoja, here's some of the things that Deus is talking about. How much of that Museven has investigated before appointing Nobat Mao as a as a minister is neither here nor there. So these are the issues. Um, but that said, I reject completely the idea that um, uh, Milton Obote uh, and UPC continued with the, 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 the colonial uh, uh, administration's process. If anything, actually Obote's robust approach uh, and, and programs for Karamoja in part led to his um, 
his unpopularity with the imperialists uh, uh, because uh, uh, what he had a program for national irrigation. The other day I had it from Museveni. It comes to me like a pinch, considering what I know and considering how much Museveni really should have known since the guy has been here around for the, since the 60s. So he should really be implementing these things rather than uh, fudging conversations and blaming others. So, no, Karamoja was due for uh, massive national irrigation as a project, as a program. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, because the Israelis and others who wanted to, to dine onto this uh, uh, um, uh, could not be allowed to get a hand onto the, the Museveni style country kind of investors these days, uh, and partly because their project, their approach, was actually to sway off the Nile in punishing Egypt instead of the Nile serving Ugandans and Africans. Or what they said, no. So he faced the wrath. Now that is of something for another class of session for you. So it's rather big. So it's actually not true. Number one. Number two. Um, uh, the approach the initial UPC government did was beyond the provision for irrigation, provision for dams, which was done across Uganda, including your 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 uncle, which you guys benefited substantially, particularly led by uh, UPC's powerful John Bahbiha, but. Uh, now sunk by NRA and uh, uh, Museveni's deputy specials at Kazibwe in reviewing these other things is on record uh, that these guys went ahead and did the loot. Because these are the things that directly impact on the broader question of economic crisis that we face, food security crisis that we face. And then in this case, Karamoja, as the weakest of the weak in our country, face these things. But number two, when I said earlier the introduction, I wrote a piece in my column the other time as part of these campaigns, by the way, my sister. And in that piece, I talked about uh, the most influential minister in order to. I know some people here have not been born, that's how long Enner has been uh, around. Um, was Max Chaldry. Uh, he was, um, was minister for uh, minerals, lands, and water resources. You can imagine lands, minerals, and water, water resources. resources. Max Chaldry, a Karamashan. <laughs> the most influential, powerful, well-read, beefed up, trained and brought up by Uganda People's Congress. What was it? The idea that, well, we equip in terms of part of your question, you provide, inject education, you inject health facilities, you grant alternative ways of livelihood, you recognize and appreciate their traditional way of living on country. Do you know why Museveni rolled some cartoons and actually I don't know how he ended up owning Kisozi farm? Because his allegedly a Mohima who likes cattle. So what does he do? You know, he helps himself to kind of graze it in a good way. So dips, dams, dips, dams, and diversify. But if anything, that's what the Karmajo are all about for mm -hmm. their cattle. We, we enable them to be able to do so in a sustainable way. And I talk about cattle dips. And your generation don't know about dips. UPC provided dips across the country free I have attempted in the last 12 months to look after cattle in Toronto without success because even some of the drugs that you go ahead and end up buying are fake thanks to the corruption and incompetence of the system here and lack of regulation in space. So there are big, many, many, many issues. So the situation in Karamoja is particularly extremely sad. We appointed a minister for Karamoja. What did they do? We appointed the minister for Karamoja. Was it about gold? Was it about oil? Was it about land? Was it about food security? Was it about enabling Karamoja culturally to become and to continue being part of a, of a cohesive Uganda? As indeed, as you know, from UPC's perspective, uh, I am building a small, fresh new team uh, as part of my UPC team. And I was telling a leading Ugandan civil society leader the other day, a fantastic lady, and she was pleasantly surprised uh, when I told her that in the entirety of this country, and this is not politics, in the entirety of this country, when I went around and go around, the population in my small team, which are highest young and educated and determined, are from Karamoja, sub-region by sub-region, in Uganda People's Congress. So there is this perception that Karamoja was like this other time when, until recently, uh, 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 the Semogeris and, and the Musevenis thought Uganda ended and Karuma. So there was nothing the other end. People don't know how to read beyond Karuma kind of stuff. No. So Karamoja, 
agricultural conversation cannot be have, have done as a conversation without contextualizing the broader national question. The street children you see in the streets of Kampala would not have been there had they been children from another part of Uganda. Just think about it. So in other words, how did we reach a situation in which my sister is talking about, where people begin to die? Honestly, honestly, I never knew it would happen in my country. And I'm also saying to you, young man. Reports show that the street kids are also increasing in Barada, but they're not from Kramoja. They're from the... So, Let, so let's see how some, let's have some a, contradiction there. Let, let's see how and that's maybe possibly we can put a context to conversation. But by and large, that will di diminish the emphasis of the conversation we are having. But we can also have talk about speech because not necessarily one hundred percent that they necessarily from Karamoja. But uh, if you're saying that now the situation is so bad that Karamoja is beginning to deputize street children in Kampala in terms of net contribution, that Banyankole are now becoming number two in the destitute percentage that we see in the streets of Kampala, then Mr. Museveni, you have a big job to do. It's not a job. You know, you've got a question to answer to Uganda is what you've been doing for the last 36 years. Okay, let me just bring in uh, Agnes. Agnes, something is pondering on my mind, and I, I hope that you can answer me and also answer, answer our viewers. Uganda literally is looking for market within East Africa, but also in the continent of Africa to to export its agricultural commodities. <laughs> uh, th th then how, how do you relate that to the fact that there's insufficiency domestically? W where is the correlation between those two? Well, <laughs> I'm going to answer that definitely. Mm -hmm. But I also thought that I needed to, in a minute to add my voice to the discussion of the Karamoja mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. There is nothing as unfortunate as victimizing a victim. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is very unfortunate. Uh, these people uh, of Karamoja have been victims of governance. They have been victims of grabbers. They have been victims of deal makers. Mm -hmm. They have been victims <clears throat> of nature, yeah, yeah, but not yeah. so much. Really, because Karamoja is not drier than Egypt, it is not drier than Israel. You know, they have been victims of everything. And immediately somebody comes out to say, you see, they were wrestling the other day. You see, they were doing this the other day. And you see, they haven't done this and they haven't done the other. The most unfortunate bit is that many of us have played a role in stigmatizing Karamoja as a region, but also the people in there. That some people do not even want to imagine themselves having gone to Karamoja. If you tell somebody that, no, oh, sorry, I'm not around, I'm in Karamoja, that person imagines yeah. you're not going to come back, <laughs> imagines, yeah, say, yeah, you yeah. know, how are you surviving, and all that, because we have played a role to stigmatize this particular place. I need to speak to somebody that has not been to Karamoja. It was very amazing the day I stepped in Karamoja for my first time, and I said, wow, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful place, the soils, the shrubs. You could see the, the sheets and gullies to know that what a massive water erodes through this place. The cattle, the goats, the livestock, the honey. Nobody talks about Karamoja giving us the best quality of honey. Until recent when we went there to air spray locusts and then affected the, 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 the bee population in that area. You know, nobody's talking about the positives of Karamoja. And because we have stigmatized these people and the region as well, we are creating two things. One, destroying the hope and confidence of the people that are in that area, that one can be restored. But creating a haven for the rooters and thieves yeah. and whatever, to go and strike deals in Karamoja. Don here is a, a food, is a nutritionist. The other day, I looked at an official report from government that has done a stakeholder mapping of service providers investing either in nutrition specific or nutrition sensitive intervention, but also nutrition governance interventions in this country. 
and the report revealed that the densely populated region with service providers doing those things is Karamoja and Western Nile. Now the question is, if we have not gone to root in Karamoja, what are we doing there that all these organizations and parties and programs and mm. whatever mm. are happening in Karamoja? And we cannot come out today to give accountability, mm -hmm. but instead we are again thinking of victimizing Karamoja. I think we need to have a candid discussion of what exactly is happening in Karamoja. But to me, we may not come back on this show on that. We owe the people of Karamoja an apology. We need we owe them an apology. One that they are living with us in a state of deprivation of that magnitude. But then two... And we are the same country. Yes. But then two, that our pictures are making rounds. Mm. And the Minister of Ethics and Integrity, National Guidance, whatever those things that, you know, those funny they names. have not come out to condemn yeah. the dehumanizing act of communicating our own people in that state. Well... We owe them an apology. The markets. We are not looking for markets. We have negotiated for these markets. The Common Market Protocol, the Sadaka Commissa, what is it? ESC Sadaka Commissa, uh, yeah, ESC Sadaka Commissa tripartite. We are now dancing in the floors and the corridors mm -hmm. of the African Continent of Free Trade That's Area. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're given a go. EU gave us everything but arms. We got a sugar quota that we never dropped a grain of sugar in the EU market. You know, we have negotiated all these markets. And the other day, our negotiators were in Geneva for the ministerial conference on trade. Now, what is happening? Two things. We have this uh, uncoordinated troops. Mm. We have uncoordinated troops. The troop that goes to negotiate markets. And the troop that is supposed to organize the specialized production that is going, you, mm -hmm. you see, when we negotiate markets, it is not an open place like a career mm -hmm. market that you carry all your things and throw them there. These negotiated markets are specialized. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of the whole about of us, my has avocado? Here. Mm -hmm. I have only learned from Kenya that not all of us goes to Saudi Arabia. There is a particular variety mm. of hearts. What are you hearing in Uganda? Has, 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 has. The markets that we are negotiating and we have already secured are specialized markets. Those that are negotiating them are on duty to negotiate markets are on flights mm. from one capital to another. These ones that are supposed to coordinate production, we are making so many steps around but without any distance moved we are like you know you can run around around about mm. but when you're not moving any distance because today like you've said we are in the nerds when people complain we run to op operation whatever creation when you have not made a very big kill now everybody's <laughs> running to polish development model. model i don't know where else we are going to run to good question the second thing mm. Is these markets, they are not markets like the Ugandan markets where nobody cares what you're buying. They are markets that require high quality and compliance to standards. Mm. And, regu here, and regulation. Here in mm. Uganda, we don't have a quality character. The elites and the illiterate, if that is not an abusive word, we are all going into a mad market in the morning and we are picking things from the ground. We don't care. Even Kenya, our neighbor, had the audacity of telling us, we feed on grain, you feed in Matoke, I don't know what, but we are not allowing your grain into our market. And those two consignments were, were rejected. There was consignments from Uganda and those from Tanzania. Tanzania responded this way. That we assessed the quality and issued certificates to each of those consignments. Please ship back a particular consignment and then we can talk for us. Hey, Kenya, eh? we are also going 
don't reject their products. We don't know where that maze ended. You know that? We are still in a country that is negotiating markets that think anything that is rejected, not fit for human consumption, is fit for animal consumption. Mm. So my dear, the markets will be like the sugar quarter, where we never took a grain of sugar on that market. Mm. They are going to be the Agoa. I last saw the president carrying rolls of I don't know what. I don't know what happened after that. European Union told us to bring anything except the arms. <laughs> I don't know. So these markets that we have negotiated, they have given us market access. Mm -hmm. And the manner in which we are transacting business here, we are denying ourselves market entry. So those are two different words. Okay. You can have access and not entry. Entry. Okay. Fair Three. Fair. What are we producing, by the way? For those markets. Mm. If you are put to task mm. by somebody who is rushing to tell him or her, what are we producing exactly in Uganda? Peace. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so these are the questions. Markets, they are not talked about. Because there is a, um, a famous professor, Professor Yashtandan. Mm. He wrote a book, Trade is War. Mm. It's not a ballroom dance. It is not about mm. rolling the suitcases from one capital to another mm. and then signing deals here and, and there. It is a real war. You have to have organized production. You pull all your resources, technical, technological, financial, everything along those lines. But every day, you hear a new product every day. You hear, and for us, even here, we are still reducing value chains to a commodity. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still having the so we are jokers. The, 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 I have asked the other day, I was asking Honorable Majesi a similar question, and I was asking him, Honorable Majesi, your policy development model, pillar number one, production, processing, and marketing, very good. What are we going to produce? Mm -hmm. Mm. Which market are we targeting? All we are going to produce and the highest we can go is Kalere. And of course, nobody had a definite. So those markets are going to be there. Mm. And those that are organizing themselves technically, that the are not market. imagining. Here we are making a lot of imaginations and a lot of assumptions. They are going to benefit from those markets. And what are we going to end up seeing here? Mm. becoming a supermarket of others. The unfortunate bit, the people he talked about, those that are going to be pushed off land, mm. they're not going to have a disposable income. They all thought they are going to come and crowd in Kampala with their border borders. I heard they need only 7,000. That is a discussion of another day. Mm. The issue is something that you're not going to negotiate is that so long as you're still having people in your territorial controls, they will eat. Mm. And if they fail, you fail to create an, an enabling environment for each one of us to feed ourselves. Mm. But now it is an issue of dignity. Even when we are young at the spring well, we could be fighting and we could ask one question, Gondi is the one who feeds me. Mm. So it's very, very dignifying to feed <clears throat> yourself. Yes, so if we are not creating and if we are not consciously watching, to create an enabling environment for people to feed themselves first, then we are we are not taking time, time bomb. bomb. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Uh, doctor, let's just begin from where Agnes has ended, the ticking time bomb. Uganda is by all means a multinational state. There are many nations within the same country. What that means uh, partly is that the crisis in Karamoja has potential spillover to the rest of, uh, of the country. But to, 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 to be specific, let's explore how food, is, food insecurity relates to national security. Do you think that the insecurity of, of food in Karamoja poses a threat to national, to, to, to national security? And if so, how? Definitely. And yeah. we've already seen that it is approaching the other parts of the, no, the country. Hunger is, is almost spreading everywhere. And, and I'm saying this because, um, for example, where I come from, we, we grew up on a, a farm, a small farm. My 
and we were educated by that farm. Mm. My brother and my sisters went to decent school. My brother went to SMAC, we all went to good school. On that farm, uh, cows, uh, banana plantation, a little trade by my father, and we all were decently educated. The same farm, which, which we, <laughs> we still look after the way we did, uh, some extent, not, not really that extent, cannot even educate one child. It, it probably struggles also to feed a few people who are at home. So mm. don't talk about Karamoja only. Things are changing elsewhere. Mm. And the, 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 the nature of soils also. They, they were supporting traditional crops, but now with the biotechnology and varieties that we do not understand very well, yeah, soils right. need fertilization. They need to be fertilized. Yeah. I don't see a national fertilizer plan. Uh, I don't see any boost in, in fertilization of soil in, in every part. Besides, even smallholder farmers can, can produce more. And, uh, but there have been arguments that the problem of, of regions of different regions of Uganda is not really lack of food, but the distribution of food, how mm. food goes to uh, part of a country that is in need. And I think what his regime had uh, had addressed that by having food banks and and and, uh, and also getting involved in 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 this whole food security thing. It's a nas national food bank. So that when one part of the country is in, is in need, then we it becomes so easy for us to to quickly go around and feed them. There's something we lost when we lost on on on. Um, cooperative societies. Mm. People think cooperative societies were, were more to do with uh, how, you know, different people in, in communities or regions came together to, to economically uh, improve themselves and also including agriculture. Mm. But they forget also that these were, cooperatives offered a, an opportunity for social formation also. Mm. These were social groups. I was young, I could see. Every like two times a week, they meet. And they beyond agriculture and their, their coffee and their, their bananas and, and broccoli prices, you see, they would also talk about education. They would they would talk about their schools. They would talk about. Do we still have that chance? Now we have a a group of so called cancerers fighting over money for <laughs> parish development model. Uh, local government little uh, that that drops down and and they are also grabbing it and and there is no system that focuses on on uh, there is no deliberate uh, focus on agriculture and and feeding territory. I've been asking on our local WhatsApp group, for example, asking where we are going because the cost of fertilizing soil is much higher so high. than uh, the the. The the, 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 the the value of the output, the value of the output. meaning that there is no profit. People are going to abandon farmlands. Mm. Maybe that's that's the ultimate. There may be capitalist farmers who take over. But where do you put these people who have left their farms and are now in all these other small things? They need to eat. Basically. They will finally. I'm now going back. They will finally stronger grab us. They will they will, they will strangle us. Mm. But maybe let me also talk about uh, government. I think what is happening, and I think it comes from uh, the very many years uh, NRM has been, uh, and the approach that we needed uh, security first. A lot is going into management of society. A lot of money mm. is going to management of society. Society is not managed. For heaven's sake, you can't manage society. You lead society. And leadership is royalty. Uh, people look at uh, your agenda. People look at, uh, you know, the, the environment being created for many things to happen. People look at uh, education and health and the state of health, the, the improvement in, for example, in agriculture extension work and, and how people are, uh, come together to produce and, and find markets. And then say, yeah, yeah. We are royal to our country. We are royal to to this to this government. So you you, and that's why a lot of money for the last like 
two decades or a decade more intensively has gone into security. Mm. Meaning, if the approach is to manage Ugandans, then you, you, you will have more money going into management, uh, uh, guns, uh, intelligence, uh, and, and putting uh, bananas in the, in the mouth of, uh, of Joe and, 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 and Mao. And, you know, you, you, then you will Jesus shift focus. <laughs> you will shift focus from what you really have to do to feed your people mm -hmm. to now move managing them. And that's why you see, even when we are talking of hunger, uh, buildings are coming up in Chanja, mm -hmm. flats, we empty, what? Because, yeah, money is going to things that really don't hold the country together. And, and there's nothing that holds the country together like, like uh, uh, um, you know, activities that, that end up feeding it, feeding her people, uh, ultimately. Because mm -hmm. have the, like she said, ultimately, we have to eat. Yeah, that's right. And so, yes. Mm. <laughs> what is happening in Kanamoja? What I see happening with even climate change, mm -hmm. with changing varieties of crops that require now irrigation, the biotechnology mm -hmm. revolution. All mm -hmm. these crops now we are putting in our gardens require irrigation. They require, they require um, uh, fertilizers. Mm -hmm. they, they require, require skilled uh, extension, extension workers and, and farmers need support mm. and they require big pieces of land because <laughs> now with with fragmentation with the uncontrolled population growth yes and also the focus now being on managing society as opposed <laughs> to leading it yeah. and that usually happens when uh, we, we 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 lose uh, politics of ideology and we mm. start you know society management and par pragmatism and all you know including Polish development model, I see it as a, a pra pragmatic uh, yeah. approach, to, which again falls on the belly of, of corrupt people, and so it may end up not making sense. So, yes, it will finally result into insecurity, mm. and, uh, and uh, uh, of course it's further exacerbated by, uh, you know, wanting to posture on, on the, on the on, on the peace peace message mm. and so that means you put more money into security into buying more guns and, and forget the actual the street and then you forget the <clears throat> actual things that you really a nation must do to rally to her people to yeah. to, to 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 win their hearts and we we are we, we are going to descend food food has always been uh, you know a person who feeds you controls mm. you mm -hmm. and so I don't know who is going to control that food thing. Uh, if the government had huge farms everywhere, I've I've had uh, I saw in the newspapers uh, the the prisons and which other prisons <laughs> narrow. Uh, I narrow. have been allowed to produce uh, a lot of food going to food production for the mm. whole nation. So maybe at that point, who knows? We mm. could have enough food. To, and after to producing it, to take to it Russia. where. Yes, to Russia. Because, no, because we yeah. don't even have national so, reserves, so they're going to produce So it take the it side effects mm. of the death of cooperative societies is finally with us. Uh, because if we had uh, if we had remained in our organized group, because now these circles, I see, they are more to do with money, going to bank, picking money. <laughs> yeah, people are talking about <laughs> money economy. I don't know. The well, money economy is money exactly economy, that. Yes, uh, I don't understand. But uh, I think it's about access to credit, access to cheap credit. To do what? Uh, credit, credit to do what? But but when you to go invest, down, really, to invest, these, in people, <laughs> these people are getting the Which money. you want to invest in? <laughs> they are they are not organized around a mm. productive Just activity. They, they even are a production chain. I am sincere. I see it. Mm. But you really see you, total emptiness. People in the banks also actually they are held at ransom. They don't borrow for 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 serious farming. They borrow to pay fees, mm. and and they keep. They, then they are very little matoke. They they keep paying off the loan. Then they go back to get fees for another term mm. like that. So it's, it's not that they are borrowing to invest, to invest. in a serious uh, a production system. <clears throat> a, a very few have have, and, and they are also struggling. By the way, mm. they are not. It's not a bed of roses, mm. and so. In my view, these uh, what we see as side effect of uh, the death yes, of cooperative sir. societies, and and mm. it's unfortunate that it comes uh, 
many years after, and it's imminent. We are mm. going to see more and more people there going hungry. Years to come. I, I see it. I see it. I see it because of many, many, many reasons, mm. and, and it will cause insecurity. Okay, so. fair enough. Uh, Mr. Joseph, doctor mentioned something that I would love you to explore, the aspect of climate change. There's so many industries that are running wherever they're running in China, in Russia, in America, but also just here in Kenya, could have contributed to the global emissions and to the and to the global warming, and therefore maybe maybe some of these food uh, food questions or the, the 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 deficit in food could be an aspect. It could be a global aspect. So do you think that there is a global aspect of climate change and global warming? that is now beginning to trickle down slowly, beginning with Karamoja, then maybe mm. gradually it will, you know, you know, be seen at a much more larger scale. So the aspect of climate change. There are many industries in Nairobi. Uh, Nairobi is the most sophisticated uh, city in the region. But I don't know whether there is starvation in Eldoret. Eldoret is nearer <laughs> to Nairobi than, uh, right. than, uh, than uh, uh, Kidepo. Mm. So absolutely not. No, I, I think um, Uganda is reaping uh, the top end seed of uh, Museveni's mustard seed, uh, meaning that the republic is now officially a headless chicken. Uh, these guys came with some crude things for people who had courage to believe, I did not, thankfully, Jesus, that uh, they had this thing called, uh, we shall put in something called independent. We shall have an economy called integrated. We shall have an economy called self-sustaining. An absolute nonsense, because they had no clue. Museveni came from the bush, bumped onto Kampala, thanks to DP and others, yeah, and had absolutely no clue what to do with this country. And as they will suggest... But he had served as uh, a minister before. Um, serving a minister makes you have a clue? A clue, because a clue uh, allow, me allow, not, uh, allow me to make the point. Allow me to make the point. Museveni had absolutely no clue to govern. Uh, until today, Museveni has no clue to govern. In fact, the worst of it is Museveni is, is not interested in governing. Museveni is interested in ruling. If he had the scintilla of feelings for this country who would review his position. The question of uh, peripheral uh, economies is one which is applicable to most developing economies anyway. But where there's leadership, nations emerge. Um, from 1962 at independence up to 1971, this was an African miracle under UPC, my government. And guess what? The cooperative movement, which is our our founding thing for Uganda People's Congress was actually moved by the likes of the Ignatius Moses here in the world where Museveni went ahead and turned into war zone. So absolutely right. The leadership provided by these guys were saying, we Africans, you know, what do we do? Uh, um, rally around producer prices, rally around storage, rally around Everything that you talk oh, about in corporate movement, we talk about coming together, you know, uh, jointly, you know, uh, seeding and weeding when we have to, making sure that we get essential uh, uh, seeds and produce from the other end, compelling colonial government that was before independence to make sure that our coffee is fair priced, our matoke is marketed, and, uh, and indeed our cotton and, 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 and our cassava is sufficiently stocked. Um, food storages, when I was growing up, as Deus would say, it was extraordinary that every household had a granary, you know, as they would call them. Mm. Food silos until today, Kenya does have, where did ours go? Even it could either you mean, you know, built onto what UPC had founded. So, you know, what I'm talking about, and it's not about, I'm not politicizing it, because it actually annoys me. One of the points I was going to make early, those pictures that you see on Karamoja, do you know? Africa last saw them during the food crisis in the 80s in Ethiopia. Ethiopia, as you're right, was so substantially demonized that thanks to more recent athleticism, you know, the rest of the world, and for those of us who had access to other medias and were elsewhere in other parts of the world, people, the word Ethiopia was associated with this. 
Now to realize then that that was 1986, 87, early 90s, and now we are seeing what's happening in Karamoja is actually criminal. And I'm saying it's actually criminal. NRA, NRA has got absolute responsibility to account for this. Now, point is this. Yes, of course, global warming How is... How criminal is it? It, it is. A global, yes. It is. It's an absolute responsibility. Explain look, 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 the, look. I have, the ordinary, I have, the ordinary I have this morning received an email mm. uh, as copied. Somebody whom I supported for a job, you know, an accountant did less than was they were supposed to do. The person failed in their responsibility and they received a sack. Private business granted. Mm -hmm. That's common sense. Museveni comes and imposes himself. After 36 years, with the point I made to you about so-called independent self-sustaining nonsense, all the money is in our names and we receive the Karamoja. You know, my sister here was hinting very diplomatically. Mm -hmm. You know, we know what happened to Karamoja gold. We know what sends people to Karamoja. It's not about enabling Karamoja. We know where the deeps, where the valleys that we built, where the valleys that we built in 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 um, in, 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 in Busoga. So so these are the issues. But to contextualize, the National Agricultural College nearest to Tororo, Bositema National Agricultural College, yeah, built by Uganda People's Congress. Is now where you hear Busitema University. University. Think about it. But uh, uh, Think about Joseph, it. to be fair to the NRM government, you mentioned the aspect of having a clue. What clue did President Obote have in 1962? You don't get it, do you? He was, um, no, he was you, no, 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 you, you don't get it, do you? Um, and I'm saying so with absolute respect, because you're a presenter. I hope it's basically uh, 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 a, a presenter's, uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, um, we were raising issues out of us. We didn't get the mess that we got. I told you, go through, and by the way, thankfully you're a young guy. Go and check your records. Uganda's economy perform economic performance in agriculture inclusive from 1962 to 1971 when Idi Amin came to power. And tell us where those family. You see the trajectory, contextual. Number two, agricultural investment in our budget. They were all talking about the nonsense about investment in security, because I was actually saying the other day, the Museveni said, he told some South African guy that they're busy investing in peace. What is this peace that you've been investing in for all these years? And a country whose population, 80% of our population is engaged in subsistence, by the subsistence, one of the reasons why Uganda remained relatively stable mm. economically was because it was dependent on subsistence agriculture and relatively the best in East Africa region, including our soils, you know? So we're actually the best placed country in East Africa re region to resist this thing that we're trying to talk about. So really what happened? Um, it is simply because, as I said, these guys came, abandoned the communities. These guys came, pushed investment. To, to have an, a country, an economy, where you know 80%, if you have a clue, and Mr. Seven studied some economics, uh, allegedly, in the University of Dar es Salaam. Mr. Seven, if you said something, it's common sense. If 80% of your population is dependent on agriculture, 36 years, yeah, yeah, you give 3.7 to agriculture, yeah, and you put a junk 17% to security. What security? What is it? But I, I, Particularly if you came in as a Democrat, let me just make this point. If you came in as a Democrat, you know, Museveni does not need to invest in security of who? I saw, for me, I was a young man. Let me just make this point. But, but, but I was a young man when... Fair, no, let, no, let me, I've, 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 I've had a look at the USA budget. And the aspect of security still, you know, stands tall. That is very simplistic because actually you don't know that I mean, American security system is part of where they get the money back. Because they make these guns and equipments that uh, these guys bossed around with Kampala. A situation in which one member of parliament, a legislator, allegedly popularly elected, yeah, has got three vehicles following them. For what? Point is, when Museveni was in the bush here, just here, including Kawimbe, they used to throw bombs after here. You know? And I'm saying this very deliberately. You know, he and Luer Museveni. Mm. That's the term when Kampala should have a security issue. The Prime Minister had a, a driver and a policeman as an escort in his one car. Prime Minister, Speaker, Prime Minister Temali Mali, Speaker. Francis Buterijira, fantastic guy from his place. You know, one car, Mercedes Benz, police officer. No minister, no minister. The only persons with the police 
out ride vehicles with Milton Obote and Paul Mwanga. The only other person with an extra vehicle as a minister was uh, John Lulu Kirunda, Minister of Internal Affairs. Why? Because this NRA bandits had attempted to throw uh, a grenade at him at Crescent House, at his ministry. So why? This is the thing. We are here talking, I'm, I'm, I'm making it more sensible to an average economist and an average Ugandan. Take the money from the mess, from the pockets, from the, the, the flats and so-called apartments up there. Take them to where they belong. So that is the club I'm talking about. These guys know Museveni is here to rule and use the money to serve his convenience. The ticking bomb that is being talked about, you know, really by and large, the thing is actually Karamoja. These things will go kampora mpora, as Museveni would say, you know. When it hits Masaka, he'll realize that actually, no, we don't need to buy people with arms. We need to set free our people so that make sure that at least they put some food in their tummy. I take this very strongly, by the way. Okay, fair enough. Uh, doctor, you had a point before you go for the short commercial uh, break. We, of course, when you aggregate, uh, if you look at the money going to the Ministry of Agriculture, it, it's, it's really small and it's not been grown significantly. But if you take the argument that we are given that money, more money goes into operational wealth, wealth creation, now some components of agriculture within uh, uh, the parish development model, you, you realize that they, if there are components of agriculture there, then the, 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 the attention is quiet. But what to me, it? the issue is not the money. The issue is the structure in which you are powering money. Mm. I think you should understand. Which is why I'm like the same. If, mm. if, you, if, this, if you are powering money in a structure which is largely not pro people, because it's not, there are no extension workers and, mm. and serious uh, agricultural colleges and community colleges to skid people around a, a trade yeah, and, and also to, to add value. Uh, and of course, at some point, we saw a lot of work being done in, in, in rural electrification. There's a lot of work that has been done in, in, in increasing access to water. Uh, and, and that would... 18 scaling centers in the 18 subregions in the country. Yeah, but scaling on what? But, but up <laughs> on, on diverse, the, scaling diverse on aspects. Wait a minute. I wish these... <laughs> I'll, come, I wish, I'll come back to that. There would be a skills, problem yeah. because if I, if I look back, the, these skills institutes, even if they were a little few regional or sub-regional during Obote's time, they are linked to a production system. system. They were linked to people. They were linked to the social economic and political they were not thrown to the people and, and and elsewhere you go even in the developed world you see these community colleges linked to a trade of the area yes. mm. to uh, uh, agricultural implements or mm. linked to it or uh, accessories it's linked to automobiles it, it's linked to you know tourism and and whatever it, it may be it, it's linked it's linked to wineries it's linked mm -hmm. to you, you will see it, there's an ecosystem sh you don't throw them to, you, you don't throw them so I'm, I'm more concerned with the structure this is where uh, my party has has had a, a disorientation a bit because I, I, I it's real you really go to a community like mine and you ask yourself what is the economy of this community? Of this community. What value are the people adding to their to their products, the, the, the products of their labor? But what is that and, whole and, that they are building? And, and, and is the, this value increasing or they are becoming dependent? Let's not hypothesize. Mm. You will see this structure missing and yeah. you will see people all over, the place. Place. all over the place. Can I actually just compliment something? And, and, sure. and, and yeah. falling on their bellies, <laughs> others falling, uh, <laughs> now running into <laughs> politics because they pay more. Yeah, it is. And they also realize that the money is short lived there, then they come back and it's, it's a, it's a, then you see an education system that is unable to, to fuel. Um, uh, Research the, and the innovation. The children's and... education is not fueling their father's trends, their mm. parents' trends. You know, it, it's was, an education you know, was for a... someone else. Over, <laughs> why New York? I don't know. There was mentioned something about his experience, yes. the farm that sustained him. Mm. There's another crisis in, particularly actually, Nakole, because mm. to put the whole thing in context. I, I happen to know somebody 
who went to a particular subregion of Ankole that I will not refer. This young man is a graduate and he's genuinely terribly worried. He went back for Christmas and he said he hadn't seen it. And all of a sudden, is an entire community uh, where there is Matoke, which is a bunch of Matoke, which is it 30 or how many thousand shillings in Kampala? Is it, you know, is a 4,000 is just about money. The other day I was having a, a youth debate somewhere and some young person was telling me that uh, a, bottle of, a bottle of water is more expensive than, than, milk. than two liters of milk in Ankole. Now, that's what I'm trying to talk about. Now, Museveni is from, he grew up in Ankole, okay? Mm. And is allegedly an economist and is a ruler of this country. And by the way, his intelligence system is so organized that you you be hard that, I don't know which your home district, you be hard that somewhere in, in okay, somewhere in, in the Kamwenge there, you were seen with a 10 little pistol. You know, you will be dealt with and Museveni will know. That's what I'm trying to talk about. It's about their priority. So how can somebody not commonsensically as a government say that, look, um, uh, through the cooperative movement, put an organized agency of government that we find a way in which we enable those communities, you know, in terms of, um, you know, cushioning them, but at the same time, make sure that some of those other wastes find themselves to possibly that, need income. That policy. is if that is your intention. But, <laughs> but, but, but maybe, see, maybe I may for World Bank push that into this. The global political economy pushed us hard. But why are we this. in? Because I'm told yeah. <laughs> at 86, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, cooperative societies were very highly subsidized by government. And we didn't have money to, to give them and to sustain them. And maybe well, that's why we went for a new order. But I disagree. Whatever the order mm -hmm. is, there must be some level of organization. There must be some level of, of, of satanity. Independence. But, 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 and, 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 and also uh, some level of real growth. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and people involved in, in, in saving themselves as opposed to the uh, moving towards a paternalistic sort of like grandfather government with, which, which does not even take care of you when you are, you are, you are sick. So we, we are turning sort of towards the, the center, but we, we are also scattered. We don't know what we are doing. It's, and, I, and I'm talking about my village, for example. I, I don't want to go very far. I'm, I'm looking at my village and I'm wondering, and I'm comparing with another village somewhere maybe I have been, and, I, and I'm, what is the economy of this village? What do they? But what, what is the economy? Are they growing? Are they, are, they able to, are they able to add? Are they able to produce an right job? Yeah. And, and this is a big group, and, and they have been on program. They now have power. They have water. One could say these are now the, the primary inputs, but. No, well, Doctor, I, I our, our, our time is, <laughs> is, is fast spent. We have to take a short commercial break. To the viewers, we hope that you're enjoying this conversation. But there's a comment section right below this YouTube channel. Kindly give us your comments. Let us know what you think about this conversation. Give us your alternative opinion. But above all, just stay right on set because we shall be back shortly. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Well, to our viewers, many thanks for keeping it the Citizens Chat Show. We hope that you are learning a thing or two about whatever is being discussed on this on this show. Well, like I had promised you that we shall be joined by other two distinguished gentlemen. And I'm now proud to inform you that, yes, we have been, enjo we have been joined by Honorable, um, the name is Paul Cole, who is uh, the Director General of the African Leadership Institute. Honorable, many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yes, and welcome to the Citizens Chat Show. Pleasure. Okay. Yes, uh, to those of you who follow this show religiously, I'm sure the face that I'm about to introduce to you is quite, you know, very common face on this show. The Honorable Leandro Kumakech, former member of parliament of Gulu Municipality. Many thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I greet all viewers globally. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Too. Well, uh, without further ado, you came in when we are just about to conclude, and conclude on the conversation around the <coughs> Karamoja food crisis. And maybe just to wrap it up, I'll just get a comment or two from each and one and from each and every one of you, maybe in four minutes each. Then we shall shift gears to discuss the Democratic Party, President's appointment as a minister in the NRM government. Okay. So beginning with you, Honorable Leandro. 
The Karamoja question. <coughs> yeah. I, I think for me, uh, I did a study in Karamoja uh, seven years ago where we, we moved the whole of the place for one month, uh, staying in the Manyatas and getting to understand how the traditional institutions work. And uh, the most amazing thing is that Karamoja is one of the most advanced society, mm. very advanced. Mm and uh, one of the most fertile area of this country that you need to understand the dynamics of climate and then you engage on how you, you, you manage water mm. and then the rest will just flourish. Now these are things that have been ignored by those who are extremely ignorant. The British went to Karamoja and distorted the whole perspective of Karamoja and they made us to believe that we should not wait for Karamoja. And it became, became a saying, yeah. you know, in governments and everywhere. Karamoja in its totality, when you look at the size, I will not give the, the, the real square kilometers, but it's big enough. It's the and size of Belgium. It's the size of Belgium. 27,000 square kilometers. Exactly. Mm. Now, the most amazing thing is the advanced culture where there's a belief that we, we, we were told that uh, if you say someone is naked in Karamoja, that's the beginning question, and that is what the British traded badly. We need a sociologist <coughs> to understand. Uh, we were in a focus group discussion, and uh, one of our researchers asked why people are naked. One elder just gave us one statement. <coughs> said, there's nobody who's naked here. Because we have never put on what you are saying and therefore, there's nothing to presuppose that we have ever put on those clothes because we don't put on them. We, we have our garments the way we have traditionally. Mm -hmm. So to say we are naked, you're abusing our, mm -hmm. our culture. So that is why we had to come with a, with a title that <coughs> later became a, a very interesting statement from, from David Paul Cole that we must change the lens if you are to understand Karamoja. We must change the lens because we use very wrong lenses. Mm. And uh, at present, the biggest, there are two questions that need to be answered and possibly David will answer them. Who is talking? Mm. 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 Right? Mm. Who is talking now? If you look at those who are talking, they are not the Manyata people. Mm. 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 They are government, you know, officers from Kampala yeah, being driven to Karamoja. They are the ones talking. The Karamojons are not talking. And therefore, what is happening? The end result is that we have all the structures of government in Karamoja. And we presuppose that for all these structures, they give reports to their mother ministries. Mm. And therefore, government is in position to ascertain entirely challenges that happen in Karamoja. On either by month, uh, uh, monthly or quarterly or everything. So it cannot take the government of Uganda by surprise mm -hmm. to know what is happening in Karamoja. Now, for me, this is the biggest scandal that you can, you can see happens. Because if you give Karamoja one trillion Uganda shillings in a budget, mm -hmm. then you solve the entire issues of water. water. Uh, you know, everything else can be sorted. Because look at their roadways, the long roads, the long roads can be turned into even, you know, kind of dams mm. that as you drive along, it dams the stretch mm. and then this left will be water. There are many places, all the sub-counties can be turned into very important dams that can supply water the, on the rest of Karamojas and they can put silos to grow everything else. Karamoja is very important. Why did the British mention in Security Council in 1948 when the Jews were supposed to be resettled? Mm -hmm. the, the British knew Karamoja was one of the best alternatives for resettling. Mm -hmm. The Jews. And they moved the motion in Security Council that the Jews should be resettled in Karamoja. But when consulted, the Jews refused to come to Karamoja, not because they thought it was bad, but they said that Karamoja was not their promised land. They wanted to go back to where? Right. To where they are. So that tells you the importance of, at a strategic level, 
of how that place is. Look at the, the, the minerals that are there at present. And who are mining them? Mm. These companies have not even had any single thinking of corporate social responsibility. Apart from what the American uh, government did through USID, the $21 million. I don't think there has been any substantive position to support the, the current emergencies. <coughs> the locusts came. The army worms came. What else came? There were three things that came. Now, those were indicators that there are, there are going to be mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. And in Karamoja, you don't need a climatologist. You need the local village mm -hmm. elders. Mm -hmm. They understand how seasons operate. And David will tell you details. Mm -hmm. That it is very easy to ascertain that there's going to be famine. Through how the army worms come and how they go. You know, these are very indigenous knowledge that government has failed to capture yeah. or relate with the traditional leaders to understand. So for me, the Karamoja question seems to be ignored. <coughs> I've talked about who is talking. I think David will ask another question and answer it. No, who is dying? Who is dying? Mm. That is the second question. The, who are dying? Mm. Those who are dying are not those who are in trading centers. In uh, in uh, I mean, that place near, how do you call it? Nakapere Pre Trading Center. Mm. Almost all the trading centers in Ora Beam or where. Those who are dying are in the Manyatas, in the grass thatched, mm. where there's completely no support, no communication. They are mm. not into all these smartphones and everything else. So, how do we enhance uh, capacities for them to survive? The rest who are in trading centers are doing very well. Yeah. Actually, if you drove there, you'd not know even that there are problems. But who is talking about their problems? People who do not understand. Okay, let us shift gears. Uh, okay. Honorable David, Leandra has asked a question. Who, who is talking? But also he has said that the Karamojongs are actually not talking. Well, you're here with us and now is your chance to talk. What exactly is happening? I think there are two faces of Karamoja mm, today. Mm, 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 mm. There's the Karamoja along the tarmac road from Soroti to Moroto. Mm. Yes. Mm, mm. And those roads that are being worked on. Okay. There are Karamojong those trading centers, Karamojong around the mission compounds, mm, mm. around the NGO satellite station. Mm, mm. Life is Christmas. Mm. Okay. The RDCs, the police, the army officers, the what? Life is Christmas in those satellite stations. And uh, and uh, they are part of the Uganda economy now, mm. okay? And therefore, they are, the difference between us here now and the person who's dying is the salary some of us get at the end of the month. Mm. For them, they don't get any salary. Mm. Is the, sometimes the insurance the NSSF <laughs> that you can even access your midterm. Mid mm. And for them, there is no social security. When their goat dies, when their cow dies, mm. when their what dies, there's no fallback position. There's no animal insurance scheme that our government is introduced or is running. That if the vagaries of nature or the diseases that we have failed to provide a parasite <coughs> for you or the extension service for you, if they die. So it's like those ones are abandoned. It's like they are not part of Uganda constitution. It's like when you get out of the tarmac road, out of the road, to go into those manyatas, you have temporarily gotten out of the constitution, the Republic of Uganda, until you come back to town again, where there's a health center, where there's a school, where there's something. But to you to live there, unfortunately, that Karamoja, the, the, the second phase of Karamoja, these are people who did not go to school. They have been following the cow and so forth. They went into the, they invested wrongly and mm. bought guns to defend themselves mm. because the former state is imported from sedentary communities. Mm. It is fixed. A police station is fixed. Army barracks is fixed. The hospital is fixed. There are no mobile clinics. There's no mobile services, for example. Mm. So when these people move away, so they, they, the former state came and they, they raised the flag in the morning. They lower it down in the evening. It's about sovereignty. Mm. The reason for government to intervene in Karamoja is sovereignty. <clears throat> you Turkanas, you are not part of Uganda. Toka, toka, go away. You know, this is our national. You're talking like who? You, you're in a common man. So it's sovereignty. 
keeping the flag, lowering it in the evening. But between the time the flag was raised and the time it was come down, how many people have died of hunger? How many cows have been stolen? What action did your government take? And secondly, those officers um, are just historians. They record incidents. Mm. And then they write monthly reports to Kampala. They write uh, we, uh, quarterly reports, annual reports, incidents of what has happened. And then now when they come here, so you can see the first reason why government came to Karamoja in the name of sovereignty. They cover a geographical area. You are not a DC of this whole area. But you have no substance. You don't hold compliance. You can't, you, you know, in terms of uh, essence of governance. It's too weak administration. By the time you go to the periphery, those communities, those villages there, even the services becomes less and less. Even authority becomes less and less. So, so I'm saying the second reason why government comes there is law and order. Okay. Two things. So a government that comes to Karamoja for, or for sovereignty to keep the flag that we are in charge of Uganda, including Karamoja. Okay. Secondly, we are there for law and order. And they, sometimes the soldiers become a law to themselves. Mm. You're supposed to, even if you're disarming, but use lawful means. You cannot come and if, if a Muganda steals my car from Kampala Road, you look for that Musoke. You look for that Mukasa. Mm. You don't arrest cars of other Bagandas which are on, on Buganda Road or cars even up to William Street. Mm. Okay, But in Karamoja, the story is different. Even when you were not, uh, uh, you did not go to raid, the fact that people went from Madeniko to raid GA or Bokora, they come to any Madeniko and grab your cows. The injustice. Mm -hmm. These are livelihood assets. <clears throat> you take them to pay the other people because of the lazy approach. You are not following Pulkol who raided or Achila who raided. You don't look for the criminal. It's group punishment. So mm. now, because they are in the villages there, nobody hears them. Mm. Okay? Nobody, so when they get a chance to, re, to go and revenge and look for guns and go and solve the problem, because the former state cannot do it. Mm. Let's leave that problem. Now, when the local people, they're just like any other Ugandan. They also want peace. Mm. They, want, they share resources. They move from place to place. For example, now, even us in government, even NGOs, even international, World Food or UNICEF, when your contract ends, you look for green pastures elsewhere and sign a new contract. So when the grass here becomes brown, the point of sitting here and die, so they move to where the green grass is, physically with their, with their cows. So these ones are international nomads. Okay, those ones are nomads. Mm. It's all about contracts, it's about survival, it's about procuring a livelihood in a, in a habitat which is drastically affected by the variability of the resource. Your cows must be somewhere to benefit from salt resources. Mm. Leguminous, nutritious leguminous grass. Mm. They are not everywhere. Mm. You have to track for those resources. Now, uh, let's pack, let's put all that aside. So I've said who's dying, mm. first of all, those ones there. I wish a media houses in Uganda could just sponsor or somebody could sponsor the media houses now and go to Karamoja and go to those villages I'm talking about. Let those old men and women behind those thorny stockades and those, let them even open their granaries and see if there is anything we need. <coughs> let them go even inside their grass thatched hut and you see the property they have, whether there's a bed or a TV or you will see for yourself. So so that we are not treated to this drama in parliament where a minister says there's nobody dying, where somebody says you are politicizing the what. So I just wish, I recommend. So, so David, if you don't mind, so it is the case, Obama moderator, yeah. that thus far, and we stand to be collect, cor 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 corrected, that the major television networks in this country, NTV, uh, the UBC, NBS, whatever, including this global media whose feast to their goals, that the Karamoja man has actually spoken that actually there has been no media, major established media work coverage in Karamoja. But most importantly, 
investigative to engage the minds yes. of people like Let's us. Let's get the to question and and the, 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 the What a shame. Yes, wake mm, up. Mm. The, the Panaf, uh, what is Panaroma. Mm. This business of that front line, what, what, go there and hold it there and you see, <laughs> you show Ugandans. This mm. is breakfast, what, what is it called? Mo breakfast. <laughs> morning. Morning, what breeze? Morning breeze. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> you get a real breeze from that side. But you just say, for once, yeah, yeah, for once, yeah, Ojama, yeah, I'm yeah. just asking. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second, the second thing is uh, which he, he talked and said who's talking so that's why really it is important to get those people to talk and uh, also now most of the stories from Karamoja are one-sided mm. tell the mm. police spokesperson is the third division spokesperson the military every government department is a spokesperson <laughs> now who's a spokesperson for well, those well, and even those uh, MPs who are elected to parliament who ordinarily are spokespersons of mm -hmm. the area, you only hear Faith Nakut, or once a while you hear who a few of them now because they used to be poor call. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. trying to mentor young people so mm -hmm. that they know how to speak for Karamoja. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be the, the lonely voice. Mm -hmm. So when you keep quiet and mentor these people, get these people to be invited here, invited there, let them speak. Mm -hmm. So, because so, 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 but the challenge is are they saying the right thing? Mm -hmm. Some of them, yes. But what's the right thing? And the people's representative? Now, sometimes they become, of course, there are people's representatives in the parliament. That's mm -hmm. the third arm of government. Mm -hmm. But some of them become, majority of them become government representatives in their people. Okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of being mm -hmm. people's representatives in mm -hmm. government. Now you begin saying the government has said, a government is what Papa is saying, that Mama is saying, Mama. <laughs> So, 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 so the challenge is, who's representative? Are you? Mm. So, so in a moment like this, how can we wait until people have died? And before these uh, few weeks, the stories of Karamoja were about disarmament, disarmament, disarmament. Mm. Mm. But did this thing fall from the sky? No. no. It came from 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. It's, it's been building up. So anyway, let's get back to uh, do we have advocates, lawyers in Uganda? They are, we have many of them, the law firms. The advocates, can they advocate for Karamojo Jama Fida? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Or law society? Because for them, they even have papers. Mm -hmm. They are advocates of the high court, mm -hmm. eh? <laughs> of the courts of adjudicature. Mm -hmm. Eh? Supreme Court. The, of the Supreme all other court. courts. And <laughs> injustice is being committed. Yeah. Which is resulting into this. Yeah. Well, so and I'm uh, saying if you want I want to finish this yeah, point and say, yeah. what can lawyers do in a situation like this? One advocates I uh, be you are be advocates, even if it's pro bono or Jama for mm, Karamoja. Mm, mm. Two, you can go for public interest litigation. Mm, mm, mm. Demand, how did this come? Mm. How can so many reports come from LCs, from a district, uh, whatever, from all those offices to Kampala, and the government is found sleeping? sleeping. Who, who slept? <laughs> Let's mm. hold those people mm. accountable. accountable. Mm. Because in the CA, I took uh, the letter Jibo on mm. over this famine thing. Mm. It was denied. But I was trying to get to put in the constitution a freedom of access information to be a fundamental right for Sri Uganda. Mm. And I was saying, if it is found that these reports were available, even if you're a prime minister, you must be sacked mm. and let the rats nibble the feet of your children. Then you know what the poor people go through. And that's what brought me problems mm. with the later table. It was sacked. But, but, but let me come back and say, the second thing they could do, mm. look, minerals are being taken out of Karamoja to ginger, factories mm. to make paint, to make terrazzo, marble. They are being brought to Kampala, taken to, to wherever. They are to being Toro. taken to Tororo for the last Tororo. Have you had Tororo cement donating something? Mm. The Chinese uh, uh, sun belt, which is really exporting big, 50 meters by 40 meters, huge marble mm. out of the ground. But people are dying next door. Mm. Have you had them say something or even donate anything? So those who are wildlife authority has taken a huge amount of fertile land in Kidepo, in the game reserves. Now, I found in Matheniko game reserve recently that wildlife authority has even again given a concession for mining. They are taking marble cement inside the game reserve. Mm. 
Mm. Now, this is why I want lawyers to come in. I mean, you're holding this land in trust of the people of Uganda for one purpose of one life. Mm. When the land use changes, mm. do you still hold it for because the purpose mm. for which you are you're holding it in trust has changed? Mm. It is now mining. So shouldn't that land revert back? To those communities, so even that the who, mandate is who takes who takes royalties now? Yeah, so even the mandate who is takes who takes now land surface rights? Mm. You shouldn't they, people be getting that money and feed themselves? Mm. Should it be wildlife authority? The 3%. Shouldn't there be shouldn't there be a public interest litigation? Right. Because if you make a breakthrough in the course of Uganda, then you have saved millions of these people who are being dispossessed of their livelihood inheritance. Mm. Because if you take fertile land, and then the people are playing games like this. So, so the, the third area is customary land. Now, is a district land board a customary institution? No. no. Is the area land committee in a subcounty a customary institution? Where are the people getting papers from these and taking away uh, customary land? Mm. That's what I'm saying. Are there no lawyers to help Karamoja mm. to prosecute <laughs> government? government? Okay. And, and if you succeed, to... you will have but, saved that fertile yeah. land for the people to live in. Yes, Thank you, David. Course, okay. I, I, I have a third one, a third yeah. area they could help Karamoja. Okay. Okay. On uh, on public interest litigation, human rights. Mm. My dear, a market when it picks up a market a day is picking up at eleven thirty at midday. That's when the army comes and cordons off. You've taken your goat to sell. You've taken your cow to sell. And they arrest all men. Mm. And then they sort you out. Those who are Karimojong here. Those who are other traders who came from Teso, Bugishu, where the other side. And so they, these ones are taken now to be sorted out. They, they spend two weeks mm. as they are sorting out. They are punishing them. They are abusing them. Some are being castrated. Some are being beaten severely. Even to confess that I have a gun. Even when you have no gun. And the family has to sell whatever cow remain behind there to, to get you out. The military wants two million to get you out. The local leaders are conniving with the military officers that to get your son out, pay this money. From where? First of all, what happened to your cow, mm. to your goat which you the brought to sell? The you were negotiating with that trader. And now you've been taken. So definitely run away with your goods. <laughs> and what happened to the money you had just received? And you've been taken to custody. Nobody will leave. So that's why I'm asking the large questions. Now, what happened then to the family members you left behind? You are the head of household. What happens to them? So some of the people who are dying are dying of mm -hmm. these injustices. Mm. So let me stop there for... Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one, yeah, just, uh, just of course, this up. leads back to what is happening. Mm. The food, the, the hunger, mm -hmm. the situation. And from what we are hearing... Um, there are lots of players in Karamoja region. I told you. They leave government on the side. Mm. Amen. And, and they, are, they hold legitimate authority. They, they, they are the protectors of the people, the, the sovereign. And so they, they are accountable. But we, we see the, the church is there. The voice of God is there. The church. I am embarrassed. Mm -hmm. My church, 78, 80% of, of Ugandans, I imagine also Karamoja. What is the church? Where is their voice and, and their deep voice? Because they have it. Mm. Is God escaping? Is, is he for the oligarch? <laughs> is God for the for, for those who can who can give off factory sustainably? Where, where, where are these NGOs? Because we are being told that the NGOs are many there. And for so many of them. speaking English and all mm. and are driving huge vehicles. Where are they? Where can they speak loud? I'm and here speaking a, loud, a but I'm not voice. in Kalamoja. It was good to have okay. and, 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 and I'm also in NGO And I'm, now. I'm saying <laughs> three I'm glad the mm. children of Karamoja as blunt. I'm I'm depressed when uh, when he talks mm -hmm. I get depressed. The children of Karamoja should be frank about this situation and, and speak loud about it. Mm. Uh, but this goes back to what we, the food. The people, they are so dramatized that they don't even have time to take care of their, of their cows mm. and to, 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 to create a mechanism, a framework for, to become food secure. Mm. And, and it seems government, from what is being said, 
is an accomplice also of some kind. Yeah, again, we are the, the, agents uh, uh, of uh, that uh, problem uh, also. We are both we, victims. We are dramatizing as well as agents. a region uh, and uh, people be because government. I cannot imagine like we said. Agnes thinks otherwise. Yeah, otherwise. These are people these are people with their cows. What security is more than a cow? You can sell one cow and have food for, for half a year. And, and, and we know people who are selling their cows to educate their children. Mm. Why is it that when it comes to Karamoja, Th they, 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 they cannot the sell a cow? The cows they have. Yes. A heritage okay. of cows, yeah. they should mm. have healthy babies taking good milk. milk. They should be healthy. And you know, a very poor fed from an institution boy, a fed child, childhood mm. is, is a terrible adulthood mm. and, and, and defunct in, in and many ways. Girls. So. Mm. Where are these voices? And I'm going on to the church Culture before we start. Well. We start no, no, the culture the institutions have government. already been victimized. Church? What is the church doing? <laughs> mm. That's why sometimes I, I think uh, I came to a place God where I found that somewhere. even the Catholic Church was questioned by agents paid by Tororo up in Mount Moroto. Mm -hmm. Now, the church was organizing the community voices, and they created their own organization to be able to advocate. And even even to negotiate with Toro Cement. And now then the agent, one of the agents of Toro Cement, mm -hmm. who's now a district councillor, writes a letter on behalf of the community, castigating the church and so forth. And so how can you doubt that bishop? Uh, yeah, that but, 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 I, I I'm just saying mm -hmm. so, they, they have the power. They 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 yeah. the, the, the there used to be pastoral job. letters. How they come there's no pastoral yeah. letter why, 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 why from the Pope? Write yeah. the pastoral letter yeah, from to the, the Pope, Pope and say you are from the Archbishop of Uganda. Where is the voice of Joint yeah. Christian Council? Their mission is to take care of God's people. If Jesus was walking in Karamoja now, how would he handle this? What would he handle? He would be killed. Maybe. So so for me, this whole thing. I'm focusing on the distortion of the structure, the traditional structures of, of food. The production, production system. The mm. People are dramatized and they cannot settle to, to milk their cows and feed their babies. I, I'm not surprised they now can't even feed themselves. So, the cows are there. They can sell one and buy food for half a year. Just one, one cow like this mm. in, in, a, in a properly uh, regulated market, market by government can buy food for a whole year. Now, I'm not surprised because it seems they... Like I told you, uh, when you put salt in milk, it mm. immediately separates. Yeah. If you put salt in karo, it, it immediately separates. Mm. The situation in Karamoja is deeply corrupt. Mm. corrupt. Um, <laughs> Honorable, uh, David mentioned something, the aspect of um, public interest litigation. Mm. If we were to take the legal course, under what provisions of the law would we be causing action against the government? No, but I think I think the whole thing Just is... Just one second before we shift gears. No, but uh, but I think you are allowed to... Pro bono is allowed. You, you, even the judges, there's what we call judicial activism. Yes. That uh, the judges themselves would move themselves to the situation. Mm -hmm. So that government proceeds. Court. Yeah. Yeah, but but but, but you don't need to even quote any, any provision. But then... Mm -hmm. And then the... There are the, provisions. There are yeah. provisions. Yeah. Yeah. But then there is also the... The, the the what they call the, the legal aid service providers mm -hmm. mm. they are available yeah. mm. through the justice centers okay. actually tomorrow if you went to them and move them and then you proceed yeah. you young lawyer you don't need to waste time but yeah. Mira Forest yes. was yeah. taken but was being taken by Madhubani yeah. how a court day and I don't know who yeah. sponsored the local community yeah. mm. to take that on because you are keeping this land yeah. Yeah. in trust for a purpose of forestry now, when you take it for sugar growing, yeah, okay, yeah. So then, until they bribe the LC three chairman and so forth, but the community got somebody else. Yeah, it's possible. It is possible, they, but also look, look, I wanted to, I wanted to tell but, him, but yeah. I wanted to tell him that you see, the we are also next. talking, we are also talking about issues of human rights, human yeah. yeah, and uh, the human right to adequate food is among those rights. Yeah. And chapter when we are studying chapter four, chapter four of the, the constitution, of yeah. but you know this. Can't this government also um, pronounce itself within the constitution to ensure that all of us in this country we afford secure? Yeah. When we are starting this conversation, uh, I like to say, do all owe the people of Karamoja an apology? Mm. Because what is being done 
is dehumanizing. Mm. They are, it's dehumanizing. It is against their dignity. People have lost lives mm. on the hands of government. Because under international human rights law, our government has a duty and an obligation. Mm. The very first international instrument that this government signed when it came to power in 2000 and 1987. 87. It was the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, where the human right to advocate food is enshrined. Yeah. People are not supposed, you know, let me tell you, to hold this government accountable, people don't need to die of anything, yeah. including hunger. So we, we really have a cause, and mm. I agree with Honorable, mm. we really have a cause, but personally, I also know the pain to go through the ministry that is going to be now presided over by Honorable Mo, the pain of going to, to court. Mm. And I also wanted to hear from Honorable, do you know that there is a lot of stigma in Karamoja? A lot of stigma going down to those communities where Honorable is pushing us to go. We really desire to go there. But you know, if people are con uh, uh, but if people are condoned off, you know, the, yeah. <laughs> These are crimes against humanity. humanity. They are crimes yes. against yes. We are all watching so the Kawamojo the bodies. Here, they, they, they now know that the law under which they can the laws the is not short. No, mm. it isn't. There are so many. Yeah. It yeah. isn't. But, but in addition to that, I know we always fall on the berries of our, of our professions empty profession sometimes because mm. even when these are adjudicated on, we never implement them. They mm. are power centers. A pastoral letter from an archbishop, from an archbishop denying yeah. people holy communion on a Sunday can burn Karamoja to its knees and, and all the food can go there. We better look at the power system mm. and begin to use it. The yeah. children of Karamoja should 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 choose to, to go to parliament naked if they actually what I just the want power centers. Let's not look at he said it is mm, it, it is God. feeding us to the to, to the to the core. Mm -hmm. Lawyers will they then they will be quoting one thousand <laughs> at courts, then they will adjudicate then speaking English. Be, <laughs> speaking <laughs> the one one pastor one letter from an archbishop oh. saying that I will not uh, give, I'm just imagining, where communion is enough, take all of us there. You know, I had, and, and, I had elected, <laughs> after David <laughs> submitting, you noticed, I had elected not to say anything, mm -hmm. because I had actually reinforced my anger. And David, we were talking here before yourselves, the submissions by the Truvian, particularly your submissions, has actually brought in something fresher. Mm -hmm. I really, really hope that people who watch this thing <laughs> this Friday, go on to Saturday, wake up on Sundays, especially those ones who pretend and claim to do Jesus, that this Sunday, by Monday, they'll be waking up and going to the office and doing civil. So David has raised so many issues, yeah, yes. including a possibility mm. that we have a right to go to Kolo Airstrip, all of us as a citizen, mm -hmm. in solidarity with the people of Karamoja. People of Karamoja. We really, really deserve to do that because after all, the number one basic object of any sensible government anywhere in the world, well, maybe we should approach the, the protection in of the rights. Mm. King Muteza surrendered the whole of his salary mm. to Karamoja, and some of us went to those health centers, mm. those dispensaries where he built the protection he built out of his salary mm. of yeah. the lives so, mm. and properties of the citizens of this country. And on those fronts, very directly, what David is doing, including the issue of the market, this regime is failing. And if it's failing on the people of Karamoja, our citizens, then what are they for? But I think it's the response for all of us as Ugandans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, I, I just, I, I just mm. would like to invite ourselves to watch a documentary that we shot in 20, seven years ago. Mm. Yeah. That documentary, if you watch, will give you the total, total summary. And actually, that is what would propel... Or, is it 20 say, minutes or something? Yeah, it's 20 minutes. Mm. Mm. And, 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 and your, 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 your TV... Mm. should actually play it mm. because okay. it is about right. we died long time ago that is the title okay. mm. uh, changing the lens for us it, it is it? classic us, and if you watch it died. and it came out of his statement and we put it as the title of the documentary we died, we died long, time. long time ago
because I grow up when it's famine, you survive you the missiles, you survive malaria, you survive diarrhea, you survive yeah. a cattle raid, you survive well, and to go to London School of Economics. Yeah. yeah. You become a whole director general of external security. Yes. Minister well, government. so we died a long time ago. Yeah, mm. yeah, thank you. Well, the, yeah. the Karamoja question is one that oh. we cannot explore mm. all in this conversation. But we, we would like to call to action each and every stakeholder. But the biggest stakeholder being government, that you have a social contract with the people of Uganda and you have a responsibility to play. So kindly uh, do what you have to do. Well, colleagues, we have to shift gears slightly. Um, oh, reverse. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday uh, the, the president issued a letter Richard appointing Estabaric. the Democratic Party President General, the Honorable Nobat Mao, as the new Honorable Minister of Justice and, Constitu and Constitutional Affairs. Well, this came a day after the two had met at State House and signed <coughs> some document. Well, we are here to just maybe spare the next 15, 20 minutes to just, you know, understand what this means for our politics as a country. And there's no better person to begin with than a member of the Democratic Party. How did you receive this news of appointment? Well, I'm, uh, I'm a, a life member of the Democratic Party. And uh, I... I was the president of Uganda Young Democrats for 10 years. I mobilized the whole country and uh, participated in many events and uh, <coughs> ran for parliament, was in parliament on the ticket of the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party is one that one party that actually brought chapter 4 in the in the 1995 constitution. It was the Democratic Party mm -hmm. led by former Supreme Court Justice Mulenga. Yeah. Okay. So I think what came out in the news yesterday uh, was uh, was surprising and, and very fast. It was a very high velocity process that we may need to, to, to go slow to, to internalize. Like for myself, uh, I'm not the spokesperson of the party, but we have been informed that the president will, will give a 30 minutes uh, media uh, explanation which will give get to the gist of the the president of uganda or the, the president, president of, of the of party, democratic party the president of the democratic okay. party yeah. but i'm also surprised the yeah. life member does not know what happened no no, no, no i'm just knows. Uh, <laughs> knows. And, and and therefore the the mou this is called the mou mm. which was signed and the details of the mou is coming from the president tonight and and or? and tonight oh, okay. and uh, so Mao himself he's going to publish it in the gazette for all ugandans to read and to see what it is why for us as national why consulted as members of the party? well in the democratic party we have what we call the management team okay. yeah now the national executives are going to sit on the fifth to receive the mou and we shall see the the way forward from that meeting so it's a bottom top. So sorry, it's a it's a top bottom up. Right? Yeah. So that is where we we lie, but we expect that the president of the party will explain in detail himself or on to all these uh, emerging uh, issues that the members of the party and the, and the people of Uganda uh, are demanding to know. Okay. That is where it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just bring in Joseph. Uh, Joseph, your political party has been in such a situation before. What do you make of Never. Hmm? I mean, the... With the, the and 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 the it, has, it has been. MPs. You have been in this situation no, before. Accept. No. In, in context... Take we, it or leave it. No, we, we, we haven't been. And, and uh, you guys allow me to, to help. Um, no president of Uganda People's Congress has ever signed an MOU with NRA. No president. Jim McKenna is not president of Uganda People's Congress. Who uh, is? Uh, the leadership of Uganda People's Congress at the moment is contested between two people who, who, who were uh, following an election in 2020, and this is following uh, a court of appeal ruling, and that will be determined. It's very likely that uh, that uh, future leader of the party will be myself, um, but in the unlikely event that that doesn't happen, Jim McKenna still is not leader of UPC. Um, so just to clarify, number two, as far as the DP is concerned, um, I would simply say that this is possibly not new in a very interesting way uh, for DP. Uh, DP went in a formal alliance with NRA in 1986. 
Uh, and in fact, part of the challenges my good brother Norbert would possibly be facing now, especially after the challenges with NUP in Buganda, the core base for the Democratic Party, is that uh, um, these guys joined Museveni in 1985 86. Um, most of the top leaders of DP went with Museveni. In fact, Paul Kawanga went to become the policeman for, to help NRA cleanse Uganda mm. in 1986. And after they did a good job and NRA rooted itself across the country, NRA was really not known anywhere beyond a particular space, space between Buganda, a bit of Bunyoro, a bit of, post, a bit of Toro, hardly anyone could guess, but people were there and bits of Ancoli. But really, beyond that, you know, they, they, they went on DP base. But beyond that, the DP head, Dr. Kawanga Semogere, a decent gentleman, uh, was Minister of Internal Affairs, as I said. And the entirety of top, was the Minister of the State. Entirety, mm -hmm. Yeah, entirety of message of Minister of State. The entirety of the, the Ponciano Malengas, the all these other people. The Polosi Bambis, the Some Bukenia, Kutesa, the Kutesa, all, the, all these other guys. The Kazibwe. Um, the Kazibwe. All these are DP. So basically, DP went in a formalized so action. Actually, in a very interesting no, way. No, possibly with, uh, to with, add on to what you say, mm, mm. the, the 1986, <laughs> yeah. uh, what they call right. the gentleman's argument, yeah, yeah. Uh, was never entered into. <laughs> It was, not it was not pen and paper. Hmm. They just uh, drew up the... But it was ho more holistic though. They, they do, drew up the whole MOU, hmm. but never signed them. <laughs> but in practice, they, they implemented what they never signed. Hmm. So, so, so this time, hmm. it is the reverse. The, hmm. yeah. okay. That uh, the president of the party assigned hmm. that old MOU. Oh, was reviewed. We seriously. seriously. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was breaking news. Yeah, so that is what we need to to to, 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 to clarify. Yeah, to interrogate and find out mm. why so late like this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so DP gave NRA the base. Uh, for whatever reason, it have been strategic. DP thought they would have trailed Mr. Museveni have played them. So DP has been sucked by NRA's foundation. By the time Mr. Museveni started looking for certain people in UPC, including sensible UPC guys who thought, well, this is our country. We could work with these guys objectively and things like that. People like young guys like my brother Paul, uh, uh, David uh, saying this is a government, yeah, maybe a profession. We got to play our thing. You know, no, mm. but you know, no, but I'm going go to go to government. Mm. You know, DP was really smartly in there, so it's not new from that point point of view. And in a way, possibly Mao may be wanting just transit to reclaim. But on the other hand, I want to make it clear that we are possibly relatively fair to the operation of the deal as it were. That said, though, I think coming, as Leander is saying, mm. um, it's actually shocking that uh, while DP went into this marriage, Dr. Kawanga, I hosted him in London in 1986, mm. rather 1996, 10 years later, I was, I, was, I was a very angry man, old Milton told me, no, Joe, do. So I, I, I hosted him as was walking out. So for DP to have walked out in 1996 and left a critical element of itself, including very endangered, mm. A political party uh, uh, then, but to move on to registration in which for whatever reason we have to listen to what Norbert still has to go to say, uh, why they've gone into this arrangement, I hardly don't, I don't hardly know. But on the other hand, that said, I'm not quite sure based on some of the stories we've been hearing in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. that this will now be an arrangement of DP. Uh, uh, David and I were having conversations earlier of how people can make speculations about your relationships with other political organizations. What has been around David, I mean, rather, Paul, uh, uh, mm. uh, Norbert, that he has rather too cozy a relationship with, with the Mustafa To put it in context, since you are trying to taunt me on my Uganda People's Congress quite unfor unfairly, um, mm. with the kind of relationship with that Jimmy uh, and Betty and, and a few of these individuals who are with Mustafa for whatever reason they are. Norbert has actually done possibly the right thing as an individual. It's very interesting as a political party because I don't speak for DP. If I was in DP, I would be quite few if it will happen but um, he's done it in broad daylight and joined NRA, NRM and to that we should give him the respect mm -hmm. um, I ask anybody in any other political party to do these things during the day and if there's anybody in UPC who wants to do it just give me a ring Ms. Joseph and tell me that well you want to make a trip to the other end just make a journey then and I wish you well but please don't play this thing there's the, some nonsense some guys in UPC claim building the bridges kind of nonsense, an absolute nonsense. Yeah. And it's actually an insult to Uganda People's Congress, which was the number one enemy of NRA then, still is the number one enemy of NRA today. The only good news, hopefully, is that the principles of Uganda People's Congress is one which will help rescue this country at working together with DP colleagues like uh, Uganda in building for the isn't, future. Isn't 
Is it the use of the word enemy and an extreme choice of choice of uh, words? What did I say in context when I'm saying opponent? Opponent, 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 opponent,
then we have to invest in machinery to manage just such that we cannot fight back, we cannot push back. And then you see two dramatists coming <laughs> on stage. Uh, on stage. I, I feel like I don't want to be part of the audience okay. that okay. is going to commentate okay. on this drama. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe, yeah. just <laughs> David, just one second. Okay. Maybe David wants to be part of this audience. But uh, David, <laughs> part of your recommendations was actually attached to the legal aspect. The, the, this particular ministry has been vacant for, I think, almost a year and a half now, ever since the government was established. Well, so do you think that some of these Karamoja questions that you tended to lean towards the legal aspect will be addressed now that we have a, a, a fully instituted justice and constitutional affairs minister. minister? Well, I was saying that there's a connection here because part of that insecurity, part of this anger that people are dying now, even when the crop fails, even when the crop has not failed, the dispossession, mm. the injustice so that, that is committed, <laughs> in the morning to evening, the flag is brought down. The injustices that are responsible for even taking people to look for guns to solve the problem themselves because of the absentee state, because of the absence of justice. So I think Mao is in the right docket, right ministry, to fix some of these things. If he wants to make a legacy, mm. that to do what no minister of justice has done before for a people in the periphery, of our politics, the periphery of our economy, to the periphery in Karamoja, they're in the periphery. To see justice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least to, are there prosecutors? No. Mm -hmm. Are there magistrates? Maybe yes. Uh, but uh, are there, is there a budget for justice? Mm -hmm. uh, or these people are being taken to military courts. Mm -hmm. They are not UPDF. They cannot be governed under the UPDF Act. Mm -hmm. They are not members of the force. They don't have any number. They are not prosecuted. They are not trained. Mm. And they are civilians. And they, who, who's arresting them? UPDF. Who is keeping them in custody? UPDF. Mm. Who is prosecuting them? UPDF. UPDF. Who is using evidence? UPDF. Who is the judges? The UPDF, UPDF in the bench. Mm. Who is representing them? The that UPDF. lawyers of UPDF. So, so mm. when, when you see... How can Isn't this happen? Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he's in the right place. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would like him to really put a focus there, mm -hmm. among other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, just including public interest litigate. Mm -hmm. Okay? He could take in interest. But I see that it's a good thing to have an inclusive government. Mm -hmm. Particularly when Uganda is going through what is going through like now. Whenever we have come together, we seem to score more uh, like when when most people were in UPC for example mm. or when most people were in NRM or when uh, when uh, you bring people together of different political persuasions mm. maybe they can moderate mm. from within <coughs> now Uganda has been crying for electoral reforms mm. they moved around they came with a social compact mm. citizens compact mm. But how it was thrown out. So how several times people come with proposals to change the electoral law. And the only thing you get is baptizing electoral commission to be independent electoral commission. That's it. You add the word mm -hmm. independent. Mm -hmm. So Mao is coming now at a time when Ugandans again uh, will be clamoring for electoral reforms. Mm -hmm. Maybe some people may want to change the constitution. You've been crying about constitution, constitution, constitution. <laughs> you, you, you. Now come here. Hey, change whatever part of the constitution you want to change. Make whatever electoral reforms you want to make. Mm. Uh, and so it must be, it must be enticing for, for Mao. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. David, yeah, yeah. Call but, you're my brother. But, <laughs> what, but what Mao needs to realize mm. is that where he's seated, other people sat there before. Mm. So, the challenge facing Mao now is, will he come to turn the wheel in the same direction it has been turning all around, and that becomes corruption? Or will he come with a transformative leadership agenda mm. in that docket? Mm. And that's really, and for me, uh, making, 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 making uh, an impact 
this is an invited space. Mm. Mao has just been invited. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, when you are in a, an invited space, I sure he didn't. like the women now, mm-hmm. like the youth, they have been invited to this space. And for me, I've been a young person at 26 years old. Mm. So when I look back with hindsight, mm. making an impact in an invited space. Mm. So, uh, like for me, the women, I like mothers. They don't sleep if a child is sick. Mm. They stay the whole night. They can't eat before children have eaten. Mm. They, are, they care. A mother is a mother. Mm. But when they come to this public space, mm. I don't know where they leave motherhood. Mm. Mm. They were invited. And say, I'm not your mother. Mm. But, you know, you, they are in agriculture, they are in Ministry of Health, they are in what? How come they behave differently? Mm. So, so, so <laughs> in this invited space, mm. when you bring youth, they also join corruption. The ring. That so, 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 <laughs> so, 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 this is the issue. The ring. This is the issue now that I want us to look at Mao <laughs> tonight <laughs> and see, because that's what Karim Jong do. They will speak in the figurative. We paint a picture and then you get the conclusion. The but now I want to get back. I want to get back to this discussion. <laughs> yeah. The discussion here, the discussion here is that the timing. I've just told you mm. we're going towards 2026. Mm. This clamoring for by opposition by to change the to level the playing field and create enabling laws uh, and, and change the other people may want to change the constitution to make the president to be elected by parliament rather than what. So you have heard of these kinds of things, the, the, the spectacular mm-hmm. that uh, mm. she's talking about. Yeah. So economic <laughs> now. Mm. <laughs> including those uh, judicial decisions mm. that have not been turned into law. The Supreme, Co- the Supreme Court made mm. uh, during after Mama, after what? They have always made re- recommendations. Mm. Mm. But somehow, now this is the docket our brother is in charge of. No, but Mao mm. is now in charge. And you're praying for him. And the country, of course, is watching. <laughs> And uh, is to write his own history or obituary. I don't know whatever it is uh, in terms of uh, whether it's going to be the end of his political career mm-hmm. or the, uh, the beginning of it and he will be a star mm. uh, and so forth. But we wish him well. Yeah. And uh, unlike uh, his predecessors in DP who never signed something, for him at least he signed. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, whether uh, part of it will be abrogated before the ink dries or <laughs> it will settle uh, yeah. what... But, so is it just corruption? Is it actually a partnership? So, 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 yeah. so, so and also, mm. there are people who believe that might is right. Might is right. Mm. Like, show me your commanders, show me your soldiers. Mm. Eh? Where, were you? Where were you? When where you were, were you when men were men, yeah. Yeah, when we were in the bush? Mm. Eh? Uh, where were you? So people will be asking all kinds <laughs> of questions. I came across that. Mm. And there's a way in which I had to deal with it. Mm. When people start to look through you, you're from Karamoja, you are not part of the Red Triangle. And <laughs> there's a way in use I used to pivot and avoid the fulcrum mm. and still be able to make my impact in over. the national security. <laughs> Fair but uh, uh, really if he wants a lecture, if he wants uh, mm. advice, lessons learned, mm. we are here, we are plenty of us. Mm. So, yeah. but it is senior, a good thing, senior citizens. it's a good thing mm. to have Ugandans work together yeah. rather than be adversarial. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And I think Uganda will stand to benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, doctor, just uh, uh, conclusively, the, the opposition is ideally supposed to be offering checks and balances. I mean, caution the government where it is not doing right. I mean, offer accountability, literally. So when we see opposition players joining the ruling party, where does this leave us in terms of accountability, in terms of checks and balances, in terms of upholding rule of law? And all these other very, you know, strong institutional values. Uh, for me, I thought uh, coalitions in party politics are a very normal thing. Okay. People form uh, governments. People, uh, people form governments, coalesce. and and the first, uh, the yeah, first uh, <laughs> enemies, and I'm going to use his word, mm. to to forge a relationship mm. uh, at independence were from this group. UPC, yeah. but they found the life of winning together. 
and they 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 they, they died there. Oh, oh, it was very fantastic yeah. then, because it was, it was scary after the Lancaster places, Lancaster places, Lancaster places yeah. where they created the recipe yeah. for yeah. disaster. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the question <laughs> are no more are no more in in politics yeah. and and for me I don't want to undermine uh, no but Mao in my very little politics because Mao has proved to us before that he can start something and it can be beneficial to this mm. country. He started the discussion with coin. Mm. And where is coin now? He, he, no, he joined, but quite no, clearly Mao did, not, no, he, he Mao did actually, not start it. But uh, for the record, Mao did not start the conversation. Mao joined the conversation. He I was part the of the conversation, but, but, but he was very active. No, he didn't. No, the most important thing indeed yeah. was to move that motion yeah. that created the... Amnesty the Amnesty Commission. Yeah, you, you can thing. see. Yes. And then talking, and not he, not fighting. He, he's, mm. It's not yeah. that he negotiating. Yeah, yeah, he, negotiating. It's not that he has, he has always been part of a solution that people rarely see in the extremist uh, views. Well, he's actually a generally uh, good guy. Uh, my uh, brother. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not surprised <laughs> that he's in this, and people would judge him harshly. Should be given a chance. And yeah. and uh, and he could he could get out something great for mm. for, for the country. For the country. So. Yes, coalition. NRM mm. has uh, has DP has rejoined it. It's <laughs> it's 1996 friends 96, mm. uh, at the at the president's level like it was before with Kawanga mm. But at, at party level, all these parties have been working with NRM. The 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 the, 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 the former the former Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Uh, mm. Professor Kamut was a very big uh, UPC. Short, mm. you No, know, those are individuals. In this, no, no, no. Yes, but from a UPC's but perspective, shows how no, 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 no. From a UPC's perspective, no, no, no. You guys, from NRM UPC's... has been to to these, uh, no, and they have always worked together, mm. and uh, mm. they end up, of course, uh, singing the song properly. Mm. But <laughs> it has always. Uh, <laughs> at, at no, can I can I just clarify? Uh, uh, sure. UPC led the first coalition government and independence, and I'm so I'm doing so deliberately. Because part of what we're trying to do here is to build consensus, but also to build a solution for the future. And I actually like the way David talks about it, including from his experiences. Mm -hmm. In a manner of reasons, we exactly mild and not be critical. Mm -hmm. like, even for nobody, we're being generally very kind, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was a coalition government at, uh, at independence, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, uh, in which the discussion, in fact, the original idea was the government of national unity. Mm -hmm. DP, interestingly, refused to join because they didn't want to sit with the Kabaka Eka, the Kabaka of Uganda. Uh, uh, and so ended up a collision between UPC and KY. And granted, it was it had its own issues. Yeah, in but between. we end up going so, no, 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 you know, right, no, so that requires uh, us uh, no, 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 to I'm, to engage uh, I'm at not national that. building I'm, level. Indeed, I'm not disputing that. And we that. still need these coalitions I'm not to help that. the nation heal, to help the nation shape mm. differently. And 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 no, but is doing almost the same thing. So long as it's done time. properly. So long as it's done properly. But what I'm trying to say, officially, with this NRA from the bush, mm. you know, officially UPC has never engaged or joined it in the coalition. Individual members of UPC, upon their conscience, and I would like to encourage those who they still think there is dining at Chadron Road and your members of Uganda People's Congress mm. and your channel presidents, you're free to go ahead and do so. Mm. But officially, as a party level, when that time comes, we shall see. But thus far, it has but, never happened. Yeah, but, but, but UPC but, but, is but, an iPod. Yes. Yeah. All those so, parties so, that are represented but, but again, in Parliament. Once again. For I, I, party, I, I, and iPod okay. is not a coalition. No, 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 no. no but, but at least uh, sit there and work together with indeed, other parties indeed, indeed, indeed. to shape uh, yeah, the yeah, influence. Yeah. But, but, but what Mao needs to remember, it's still yours, is that uh, Apollon Simbami, the late, mm. was a whole dean or head of Miser. Mm -hmm. and was talking about a living wage mm -hmm. in Makerere. And so by inviting him to be the prime minister to of Uganda and look for the money for a living wage, it's <laughs> By the way, he, and fun, give he laid the foundation we, now. We, we yeah, have and give Uganda. Uganda. Leandro. He yes, laid the foundation after Mao can also lay foundation. Party mm -hmm. Constitution. Mm -hmm. Does he still remain the president general? He's the president. He, because the, the party... Remains. The party organs will yeah. adopt. Uh, yeah, the will party organs will, will, will make mm -hmm. resolution. Agree, the two parties can yeah. do it by and, the way. Uh, yes, so fine. Yeah, if and we, and if the structure. if the national executive passes the position to national council, which sits on behalf of the the delegates conference. And then that is the position. Maybe you consulted the them widely. Okay. Yeah. But, but I and then I needed to oh, just yes, add yes, I needed yes, to add something just to one minute something. each. One minute each year. You see, we, we may need to experiment uh 
constitutionally coalitions because in Uganda we have actually been just either poaching or hunting. Mm. Uh, we needed to, to look at case studies that have succeeded, like Germany. Germany have coalition governments. The last one was uh, <coughs> CDU, you know, working together with the real opposition, yeah, yeah, yeah. SPD. Yeah. Northern Ireland. Uh, Northern Ireland and all this in Britain. Okay. So, so it's working very well. Yeah. But the whole thing needs to be, the framework needs to be added into the constitution. Because we have never done it. It is a winner takes all. If you win, you win. Those who have pains, they suffer. Yeah. But I think where we are going to avoid more conflicts yeah. in future. The NRA needs a coalition yeah. uh, to survive. 1962, we offered it at independence. Mm. In 1980, after the general elections, we offered a coalition. DP refused, decided to go on a position. Because this that is, is why record. we need a constitution. Instead of coming to parliament, mm. we went to the Bush and the Because these things need to be put we need, on record. We need to amend the constitution. Kind of right for me, that's the thing. It's a convenience to, say to bump and pump it is, NRA. It is a constitutional requirement. I, yes, I, I need to, personally, at the political level, at this point, with Mao's acceptance to join the NRM, to thank the NRM. Because at the time, when every commentator is looking at NRM as a party to resign from, <laughs> Mao is showing us that there is hope that the NRM is a party with which we can work mm. to take the country. To build a nation. And I thank these two parties for what they have done, because this is normal. It was done by our founding uh, father, Yimito uh, Nobote, <coughs> so being done now to heal, to push for things that really work, the pe people are complaining about, mm. and to remain with the sanity, <coughs> like uh, David is saying, to remain with, to, 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 to roll the tide uh, in a different direction. Mm. And the clockwise. <coughs> and, 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 and to make sure that things that are not working are working mm. is a good thing. So now, NRM has demonstrated that it's not a party to resign from, it's a party to, but it's a party to work mm -hmm. with. And you're and speaking as a so supporter, many, as a member. And there are so <laughs> many people who have worked with it. Uh, uh, Professor Kamon to the last... Uh, 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 yeah. Jim Akin well, uh, 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 first yeah. lady. <laughs> <laughs> all these, uh, the, 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 the former minister for... Most Bete of Kamia. these are either grandchildren yeah. or, yes. or, or, or children. children. So I, 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 want, yes. I want to... But I wish yeah. all yeah. these people went yeah, in. I know. I know. When Opoka won <laughs> in Fact. parliament for mm. East African Legislative Assembly, yeah. everybody sang... Hey, hey, mama. I saw that. And what? Yeah, yeah. 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 The whole yeah. house yeah. was yeah. Yeah. So, so I wish they <laughs> went there. That's why I'm happy thing. that yeah. UPC is the future. It's so, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I wish they went there to <laughs> fight yeah. corruption, corruption, to fight uh, <laughs> uh, abuse of human rights, yeah. Yeah. to make sure that everyone feeds and everyone enjoys the country. Rule and to end yeah. excessive spending. Mm. Mm. on management of this country okay. and Thank we you. begin and, to rally and, 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 to, and to remove okay. and to remove politics as an economic activity mm. into <laughs> a national okay. responsibility uh, okay. for the city it is now an industry yeah, yeah. yeah i'm saying that uh, it is like you said it is now an industry mm. about two million elective positions today in uganda senior citizens thank you very much for joining us on the citizen chat show um honorable david honorable leandro dr deus um agnes Honorable Joseph, many thanks for joining us on this particular episode of the Citizen Chat Show. To our viewers, many thanks for joining us each and every single Friday. I was only stepping in for your official host, Damian. Hopefully next week, he will pick it up from where I've stopped. From now, have a lovely weekend and may God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>